Tonight, Easter holiday plans back in business. The Queensland lockdown lifts and no new COVID cases for New South Wales. Canberra's appeal for help, our state to bail out the failing vaccination program. Cheap flight frenzy, 800,000 half-price fares on sale to boost tourism. Notorious criminal Basson Hamsey charged over one of Sydney's most shocking murders. Up in flames, the fire emergency that gutted a family home. Cutting the water pressure to stop pipes from bursting. Bombshell claims Princess Anne, the royal accused of racism by Harry and Meghan. The big changes to your credit rating that kick in from today. And spotted in the crowd, a league star sprung, now facing questions over breaking NRL rules. Live from Sydney, 7 News with Mark Ferguson. Good evening. There's been an 11th hour reprieve for tens of thousands of Sydney siders who have Queensland holiday plans, with Brisbane's snap lockdown brought to an early end at lunchtime today. Closer to home, the Premier says it's business as usual here for the long weekend, including the Easter show, with no sign yet that the outbreaks up north have spread south. For thousands of holidaymakers, relief today. Well, we waited to the 10am Premier's announcement and we're good to go. Sydney Airport handling one of its biggest days in years as the green light came from Queensland this morning. Easter is good to go. Just one new case linked to the Byron Hens Party cluster. The Premier lifting the hotspot declaration on Greater Brisbane. And I'm asking all other leaders across the country to consider doing the same as well. Moments like this at a Brisbane quarantine hotel won't instill confidence. In New South Wales though, no new cases since yesterday. There's nothing that I've seen or heard that would cause any concern about any activity in, in Greater Sydney or, or broader New South Wales. But it's all too late for many. Tourism data claims one in three holiday bookings have been cancelled. Not so the Easter show. 60,000 people cleared to visit daily. I was a bit concerned about the lack of social distancing, but no, we're all good. We've got our sanitizer. Hopefully no one from Brisbane or Byron's here. It will actually be the largest ticketed event during the pandemic, I think anywhere in the world. As the national vaccine tally today fell just short of the three quarters of a million mark, despite a record 74,000 shots yesterday, the pressure on the federal government rollout mounted. We are millions behind. You've got state premiers screaming at you saying, why aren't the doses um, coming to us? Every state, every territory, 12-week plan, and working to that plan. From the Premier, what 12-week plan? Oh, I can't really uh, explain that. And that's why we're behind countries like Rwanda and Bangladesh and Lebanon. Their vaccine rollout might be ahead of us, but they're still having a tragic number of deaths. One ranking list places Australia 108th in the world for its vaccinations, while frustrations are growing too on the aged care rollout. Just one in three centres so far covered. GPs complaining the supply inconsistency is causing massive problems and anxiety. We will run out of vaccines today and we will have to start cancelling at least 400 appointments. And while complaints of shortfalls were echoed by Queensland's health minister... We have right now on hand just three days supply of the Pfizer vaccine. Federal Government Minister David Littleproud was making sure the federal state stoush wasn't going anywhere, saying, I won't be lectured to by a man who was sacked as health minister and a government which is derelict in their duty and incompetent. <laughs> And in Papua New Guinea, the Prime Minister vaccinated on live TV, the first of 8,000 shots gifted from Australia as our nearest neighbour struggles to get a grip on runaway COVID cases. We really appreciate the Australian government and Australian people. Uh, thank you very much for stepping in at this time when we need help the most. And in breaking news tonight, 7 News can reveal that the federal government has indicated it will come to an agreement with the New South Wales government after Premier Gladys Berejiklian yesterday wrote directly to Prime Minister Scott Morrison offering our hospitals to help in the vaccine rollout. The Prime Minister's office says they were always open to that plan. It was something, in fact, agreed upon in National Cabinet and that some states are already locked in place. And one senior minister I spoke to this afternoon says that is news to him. They want it in writing and they need clarity. A lot of confusion out there tonight, Mark. Yeah, but a welcome step forward, Chris. Thank you. Bands, fans and business owners in Byron Bay are furious at the government's cancellation of their five-day Bluesfest extravaganza. 
It has cost organisers an estimated $10 million and they say since COVID seems to be under control, it's totally unnecessary. It was championed as the event that would return large-scale music festivals to Australia, but there will be no bums on seats. For our industry, everybody was hoping somebody somewhere in the world will be able to put on a major event. Their COVID safety plan was as good as the best they've seen. Still not good enough. One case of COVID in the Byron community shut down the five-day festival less than 24 hours before the gates would have opened. Yes, uh, the festival going ahead would have been great, but it's just a postponement as far as I'm concerned. I can't easily see people going ahead with events in the near future until there's more surety, until we're... Until we're we can safely feel we can put them on. Unable to get pandemic insurance, the festival has copped a $10 million loss. The industry calling out for government assistance similar to funding provided to the film industry. There are other countries, Germany for example, um, you know, invested two and a half billion euros. Some would-be festival guests turned around at the gate, headed for town. It's all changed, but um, we're staying on to support Byron because we love the town. Many adjusting to the newly imposed restrictions, some taking it further than advised. Takeaway only here, others closing completely for the four-day break. This should have been our second busiest day of the year after Christmas Eve, and it's not. Earlier in the pandemic, when other states shut their borders, Byron Bay was a winner, with many New South Wales residents choosing to holiday here. And although this time around the region will take a hit, it's unlikely the government will hand out assistance. I know this is a, a huge downer for many businesses who hope to trade more readily over the Easter break, but the good news is they all remain open. To reflect on what could have been an Easter nest egg. And Miley Hogan is in Byron for us this evening. Miley, the long weekend is underway. Have the crowds picked up? Yeah, Mark, the crowds here this evening are moderate. Nowhere near what you would expect for this time of year, but that is exactly what authorities were hoping to achieve. Places that are usually bustling have chosen to close their doors, while others that have stayed open are tr uh, trying to make an atmosphere, pull people in, but in a COVID safe way. Now, an interesting point, both Qantas and Virgin have not recorded any noticeable drop-off the, in the number of passengers flying into Byron today, but they will watch those figures as a long weekend really kicks off tomorrow. Mark. Miley Hogan in Byron, thank you. 800,000 cheap flights are up for grabs from today as part of a federal government program to boost tourism. Qantas, Virgin and Jetstar are all offering discounts, but airline workers say the end of JobKeeper means hundreds are losing work. Just as Peter Costello once asked us to have a baby for Australia, we're asked to take a flight in Australia to kickstart our ravaged tourism industry. To have that holiday at home, to do what we've said is the patriotic thing. This is a good chance to see the rest of Australia um, and if it's subsidised flights then it's always a bonus. The 800,000 half price fares went live overnight across the major carriers. Among the deals, Jetstar $39 from Sydney to Ballina and $49 Sydney to Melbourne. Virgin as cheap as $55 Melbourne to Launceston and Qantas Sydney Gold Coast for $77. Virgin reports bookings up 600% since midnight and more than 130,000 Qantas flights have been purchased. But the industry questions why only 18 destinations qualify for subsidies. Cities like Sydney and Melbourne are the worst affected areas in the country and they absolutely need to be on that list. The federal government is also criticised for spending $1.2 billion on this stimulus package but terminating others. Workers have just got letters from Virgin saying they're stood down. The Prime Minister's got a question to answer here. Why did he rip away JobKeeper from aviation workers? Despite what appears to be a swift take-up of the offer, based on travellers we spoke with today, some will not embrace it immediately. With the volatility of border closures, they are unwilling to make a long-term bet. We just thought we'd book at the last second and, you know, just in case we don't want to lose money, we don't want to, you know, end up stuck. The cut price campaign closes July 31, flights to be taken between May and the end of September. Robert Avadio, 7 News. One of Sydney's most notorious criminals has been charged over the shooting murder of a Sydney teenager who was sleeping in his bed. Bassam Hamzy, who founded the Brothers for Life gang, has always denied involvement in the killing of Braden Dillon four years ago. But detectives allege he had a hand in covering up the crime. 
He's in custody behind bars already serving a 40-year sentence. Nonetheless, it's alleged Bassam Hamzi had still been steering his gang. I think the community expects that we would continue to prosecute those who have been undermining the judicial system. At midday, Hamzy was arrested inside Goulburn Supermax, the Brothers for Life gang leader facing new charges relating to the murder of Braden Dillon. The 15-year-old was fatally shot almost four years ago. The killer, part of Hamzy's gang, the attack believed to be one of revenge. Hamzy has always denied involvement, but now police are alleging he was, by instructing his associates to lie about it. Creating uh, false evidence which would... Uh uh, severely sanitise the true events of what actually happened. Sparing the true perpetrators from accountability. During his arrest today, Hamzy's prison cell was searched as were those of five other Brothers for Life gang members. In one, drugs were found. In another, a mobile phone. We will undergo some forensic analysis and obviously attempt to link the owner of that phone. And how it got into prison. To make sure that your communication ties to the outside world are cut Hamzy faces court again in May. It's expected he'll defend the fresh charges. Tom Hartley, 7 News. Federal Liberal MP Andrew Lamming has been cleared by police over upskirting allegations. He'd been accused of taking, then deleting a photo of a 29-year-old woman bending over in Brisbane in 2019. Queensland police say they've interviewed a number of people and found no evidence a criminal offence was committed. A fierce blaze has destroyed a home in the Southern Highlands. Flames took hold just after 6.30 this morning, engulfing the two-storey property at Mossvale. Fire crews arrived to find the roof and some walls collapsing. Oh, look, oh it's collapsing. Oh, there it goes. Oh. It's believed the house was unoccupied, but after several fires this week, authorities are urging residents to check their smoke alarms. Australia's property boom shows no sign of slowing. The fastest price, price growth in 33 years has been recorded in March. Sydney leading the charge with dwellings here up almost 3% in just a month. Experts say some smart investors are now selling up. Gradually renovating the family home, Tom and Carol recently decided to sell. Perfect timing. And the market's just gone mad during the fix-up, so it's, mm. it's great. We've had uh, the property on the market for just over a week and we've now had 36 groups through. The auction outlook, rocketing prices. Well, I am excited about our sale that's coming up, but I'm feeling sorry for those people that don't have a home yet. It's gone crazy. Nationally, home values rose 2.8% in March, the biggest surge since 1988. Sydney led the charge with 3.7%, median homes over a million dollars. It translates to about a $30,000 increase in prices in a single month. Driven, analysts say, by owner-occupiers. People are upsizing, they're downsizing, they're right-sizing, they're sea changes and tree changes. There's just so much movement. There's also a fear that if you don't get into the market now, prices will only rise down the line. Sydney property already unaffordable for many. New research shows the bottom 40% of income earners can only afford 10% of available homes. And that's with record low interest rates and in a property market where agents say not everyone is seeing value. More investors selling up. And a lot of landlords are going, you know what, I'm actually it's not a great investment for me anymore. Analysts warn the price surge won't last forever. Chris Ma, 7 News. To breaking news and an Olympian and his brother have been found guilty of attempting to smuggle 650 kilograms of cocaine into Australia. Nathan and Drew Bagley had nothing to say after they were convicted of the crime, which happened in 2018. The jury in Brisbane delivered its verdict after deliberating for more than eight hours. More suburbs are having their water pressure turned down to stop Sydney's water pipes from bursting. For some locals, it means not being able to properly rinse their hair and taking much longer to fill a sink. But Sydney Water says the low pressure is saving millions of litres every day. Just when you thought the floods were over, streets in Greenacre were swamped by water. Do you like Greenacre? We want to swim. We swim for free. My parents have been living in this house for 40 years and this is the first time we've seen this. It's worse than the rain. We were talking about floods last week, so this is like probably a mini flood. Front yards and garages flooded after a water main erupted. 
likely triggered by recent heavy rain. Because it does lead to a change in soil moisture, it can also cause pipe movements. While one suburb has too much water, others can't get enough. Now if we have the washing machine on or the dishwasher, the pressure goes way, way down. Pressure levels have been cut in Hunters Hill, Woolwich, Pimble, Newport and parts of the Illawarra. One of the contributing factors to water main burst is pressure. Resident Michael Wright says the tap strength is hot and cold. It is kind of frustrating seeing as we do live in Hunters Hill, you know, and this is supposed to be, you know, Hunters Hill. Sydney Water says it's targeting areas where pressure levels are higher than average. It's already meant fewer burst pipes and also saves on average 30 million litres of water each day. Hopefully preventing a mess like this. Natasha Squarey, 7 News. A child is dead, one of four people killed in America's latest mass shooting. A gunman opened fire inside a business complex in Orange County, California. A fifth person was wounded. The suspect was shot by police and taken to hospital. No motive has been established. It's the third mass shooting in the United States in the past six weeks. There are now claims Princess Anne is the royal, accused of racism by Harry and Meghan in their controversial interview with Oprah. But the insider says the story has been twisted. Unleashing on the Sussexes, the UK socialite also revealed some royals found Meghan to be arrogant and attention-seeking. It's been a worldwide guessing game since the bombshell Oprah interview. Conversations about how dark his skin might be when he's born. Now UK socialite Lady Colin Campbell has let the cat out of the bag, pointing the finger at the Queen's daughter, Princess Anne, but claiming it's all a right royal misunderstanding. The person actually said nothing about Meghan's complexion, nothing about the colour of the baby's skin. Lady Colin Campbell claims not only were the comments made before Meghan became pregnant, but before she and Harry were married. Princess Anne was rightly concerned that if the marriage proceeded and there were children, there would be huge problems, not because of Meghan's colour, but because of Meghan's inability and determination to remain unable to appreciate the cultural differences. The socialite declined to reveal her source. It hasn't been verified and nobody's commenting on it, but it, it seemed that she had quite a lot of detail. She saw trouble coming. And I have to tell you, wasn't she right? Ashley Mullaney, 7 News. In a rare appearance, the Queen has paid tribute to the sacrifice of Australian air crews over Europe as part of commemorations marking the centenary of the Royal Australian Air Force. After three months in lockdown, the Queen has now had her second COVID jab. Her Majesty was quickly brought up to speed on how Australia is still helping to defend Britain, even now. The Queen's first engagement all year and Australia is on her mind. The centenary of the RAAF, alongside Australia's High Commissioner, Her Majesty commemorated the skill and sacrifice of Australians in the sky, a wreath laid on behalf of the 94-year-old monarch. Uh, the Queen receives tens of thousands of invitations to uh, do functions and the fact that she chose an Australian event, I think a particularly significant compliment to Australia. This memorial at Runnymede, just outside London, dedicated to the Commonwealth airmen who died during World War II. Among them, 1,400 Australians whose bodies were never recovered. Around 30 RAAF personnel are now based in Europe. As the Queen discovered, times have changed, new threats and new ways of responding. I mean, we uh, talk to the typhoons when they launch on the uh, response and uh, yeah, get them to set the craft. Give me an example. Chase the Russians. No, that's correct, man. It's a, it's a lot of fun for us. Australia's modern day Air Force praised too by a former Royal Air Force chopper pilot. In conflict and in peace, the Royal Australian Air Force has developed an outstanding reputation. In a written note, the Queen said the RAAF had showed immense dedication to duty throughout her reign. Her Majesty opened this memorial as a young Queen back in 1953. That dedication recognised. A long way from home. In Runnymede, England, Hewitt Feld, 7 News. 
The Easter long weekend is just about here with the Sydney fish market preparing for one of its busiest times of the year. Isabel Mullen is at Piermont for us this evening. Isabel, what can keen shoppers expect there tomorrow? Well, good evening, Mark. Shoppers can expect a bit of a rush when gates open at 5am tomorrow morning. Organisers are expecting 50,000 people will visit the fish markets over a three-day period. Now, prawns and lobsters are expected to be popular this year. Prawns will be selling for about $30 a kilo and lobsters for $60 a kilo. Now, the recent rain and flooding has affected the supply of Sydney oysters, but I'm told there are no shortage of Pacific. Shoppers will have to follow a strict COVID safe plan and adhere to social distancing requirements. But if you've left your shopping to the last minute mark, no need to worry. Extended trading hours means doors won't close until 5pm tomorrow. Always a busy day, Isabel. Thank you. Sally Bowery is here now with the weather. Sal, how's the Easter break shaping up? Well, Mark, it's looking like a fantastic long weekend. The city is currently sitting on 22 degrees, but it was one of the warmest spots today across Sydney, reaching a top of 27. Across the state, the high-pressure system has kept skies dry for most, with the exception just the northern rivers. Byron Bay picked up around 9 millimetres in the gauges today and a top of 22 degrees. Now, we are keeping our eye on a low-pressure system that is set to develop over unusually warm waters in the coral see tomorrow with a number of computer models showing it could bring heavy falls to much of the New South Wales coast. In fact there is already a flood warning that has been issued for the Tweed catchment area with up to 200 millimetres possible there this weekend. Tonight though in Sydney it will be a clear night. We've got a top at the moment of 23 degrees in Parramatta. A very warm long weekend on the way although there is some wet weather forecast for the Easter break. I'll have full details on the timing of that with the seven day forecast a little later Mark. See you then Sal, thank you. Donald Trump has all but confirmed he will run for president again next while the interview has been banned from social media. Trapped following a horror crash, the race to free a woman from a crumpled ute. Harrowing new video of George Floyd's deadly encounter, what he can be heard saying. Abandoned by smugglers, migrant children dropped over the Mexico border. And later, major credit rating changes, the looming deadlines that could affect your financial future. Welcome back. A woman became trapped following a serious crash at Arncliffe. Rescue crews had to pull the mangled ute apart to get her free. She was taken to St George Hospital in a stable condition. Two other people involved in the smash managed to escape without injuries. Police are investigating whether wet roads or drugs and alcohol played a part. Donald Trump has been pulled from social media sites again. An interview with the former president was banned from Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Critics say it's censorship. Trump says he has other plans for getting his message across. Back on camera for the first time since his historic first term defeat, but still refusing to accept reality. It was a hoax. The whole thing was a hoax. An 18-minute interview with his daughter-in-law quickly pulled by social media giants. Facebook and Instagram erasing the link from its platforms in line, it says, with the block on the former president's social accounts. The ban implemented after the January riots and while Donald Trump again hinted at launching his own social platform platform. In the meantime... I'm getting word out by using press releases. I put it out by a press release and everybody's picking it up. It's more elegant. But still no press release confirming his immediate future. Do we have hope that there's a possibility to see Donald Trump run again in 2024? You do have hope. That could mean a rematch with Joe Biden, who today avoided another stair slip, albeit in difficult conditions, on his way to launch a $3 trillion infrastructure and job spend. It's time to build our economy from the bottom up and from the middle out, not the top down. Hiking federal taxes to revitalise America's ageing infrastructure and lift the country's post-pandemic economic fortunes. In the United States, David Woywood, 7 News. Confronting body cam vision revealing the deadly encounter between George Floyd and police has been released publicly. Played during the officer's murder trial, the video shows Mr Floyd distressed and sobbing as police become increasingly aggressive. I'm not a bad guy, man. I'm not a bad guy. I can't breathe, brother. Please, please. It was an emotional third day in court with another traumatised witness breaking down in the stand, struggling to finish his testimony. 
A gender reveal stunt in Mexico has ended in tragedy. Two pilots were killed when their plane displaying an It's a Girl banner plunged into the sea. Screams of excitement quickly turned to horror when the family watching realised the engine was failing. Horrifying video shows children being abandoned by smugglers at the US-Mexico border. The toddler and her five-year-old sister were dropped over a five-metre barrier and left for dead. They were later found by border patrol agents and taken to hospital where they've been cleared of serious injury. Lava spewing from a volcano is sparking wildfires in Guatemala. The crater has been erupting at high levels, shooting columns of ash and smoke into the air. Fountains of lava are flowing as far as three kilometres away, burning through grass and threatening homes. Running late and over budget, the new intercity train fleet is facing even more delays. Next, how long until passengers can finally hop on board? Police officers face court accused of sexually assaulting a teenage girl. Freezing hope why more Aussie women are putting their plans for a family on ice. And ahead in sport, the NRL stars under investigation for a night out at the boxing. Welcome back. The Prime Minister is being warned more women and children will lose their lives without greater support for victims of family and domestic violence. He's being urged to adopt all 88 recommendations from a parliamentary inquiry and to hold offenders to account. One woman dies at the hands of an abusive partner every eight days and a child every two weeks. A problem that we as all Australians uh, should be uh, quite frankly ashamed of. An eight month inquiry by Parliament's Social Policy Committee has produced a bipartisan strategy. Its main recommendations increase funding for frontline support services, a universal definition of sexual and domestic violence across all states, publishing a national domestic violence death toll, appointing a national commissioner for women and an education program to drive cultural change. We've got to stop it at the start. Advocates say bolstering services to protect women at risk is the most urgent priority and that will come at a price. We would like to see an investment of at least $12 billion over 12 years. Stop. The report concedes the current $3 billion 10-year national campaign has failed to bring down domestic violence rates. Stop. Labor supports the recommendations but say they set a political challenge for Scott Morrison and his freshly reshuffled cabinet. This presents the first real test for the Prime Minister and the task force he has established to address women's concerns. Mark Riley, Seven News. A quarter of a million dollars is now being offered to help find the driver who hit and killed 15-year-old Braden Weldon at Wannabadgery in the state's southwest two years ago. His body was found on the road by another driver. Police are still looking for a heavy vehicle fitted with a bull bar. They believe someone has answers that can help Braden's family and friends. The date has been set for a crucial test of our political parties. The Upper Hunter by-election, triggered by a sex scandal, will now be held on May the 22nd. It's seven weeks away, but already the Premier has virtually conceded defeat. The Premier today very much on board with a new electric train for the Hunter. Nice to meet you. Welcome. But not with election chances in the Upper Hunter. I have no doubt we won't retain the seat. I have very little confidence. It would take more than a miracle. A day after embattled MP Michael Johnson quit, declaring the seat the government needs to get back a majority all but lost. Swings of between 10 and 15 per cent against the government have been frequent in by-elections. The Nationals in a four-way showdown with the Shooters, One Nation and Labor, which says it's the underdog. It's going to be really tough to beat the National Party in a seat that they've held for 90 years. The region will be first to get the new South Korean built intercity train, already two years behind schedule and the target of safety concerns. The Premier and Transport Minister today getting a test ride. But it could still be a couple of months before passengers can catch this train, with the government still finalising an agreement with the union. The National Safety Regulator also still to give its green light, but the train does now have a name. Maryung, the Darug word for emu. Paul Kadak, Seven News. They're expected to protect and serve, but two police officers have been accused of doing the opposite, using their position of power to allegedly lure a 17-year-old schoolgirl into a hotel room before attacking her. A court told it's likely they'll be sentenced rather than going to trial. 
By its very own standards, the New South Wales Police Force requires its officers to behave with integrity and professionalism, to be selfless. But senior constables James De Nicholas and Angelo Delosa are accused of putting their own needs above all else. Mr Del Nicholas, will you be pleading guilty to the charges? Do you usually prey on schoolgirls while you're in uniform? There are serious talks of perhaps having this matter finalised by way of sentence as opposed to going to trial, their lawyer said, foreshadowing guilty pleas. De Nicholas is alleged to have met a 17-year-old girl while they were both in uniform during patrols at a Western Sydney train station. Then, police say, he met up with her at a hotel room days later. Angelo Delosa allegedly waited outside in a marked car before going inside. The senior constables are charged with the same five offences, attempted rape, misconduct, in public office and three counts of recording an intimate image without consent. Both men have been suspended without pay since they were charged in August last year. New South Wales Police has confirmed this remains the case, but their employment status will be reviewed once a court process is over. Which could involve the Commissioner. He can sack them if he's lost all confidence in their suitability to continue as serving police officers. Leonie Ryan, 7 News. As communities in Sydney's west continue to mop up from the flooding, the impact of the devastation is still sinking in. Many families have returned to gutted homes, now forced to reach out to charity to stock up ahead of Easter. For the Gow family, the past fortnight has been wet. Because our house got kind of flooded. And wild. There was eight kids, five adults, four dogs, a bird and a lizard to get out at two o'clock in the morning. Their home was inundated, their contents lost. With no insurance, they're now turning to charity to get by. We're here to get food. They're not alone. Because we're running out of food in our cupboards. Samantha Wagner and her six kids were also stocking up today. And they really care and they make you feel like you cared about. Filling their trolleys at a Windsor warehouse full of necessities, a million items donated by locals and retailers. We try to be as, as self-sufficient as we can but with these things it just sideswiped us like it did with many people in the community. We've been flat out and I don't think our volunteers have slept in 14 days. It's not just essentials on offer. Hundreds of families are expected here this Saturday to collect $90,000 worth of eggs just in time for Easter. During disasters, that's really important so that charities have choice to make sure that people get exactly what they need. And what they want. Easter eggs. To ensure that despite all the odds, it will be a... Happy Easter! Amelia Brace, 7 News. There's been a huge spike in the number of Australian women freezing their eggs. Experts say the pandemic put career progression and dating on hold, forcing many to reconsider their plans. Cheaper and more reliable technology is helping drive the trend, but the freezing process still costs up to $6,000 plus a monthly fee. It's all systems go at the Royal Easter Show, now finally back in business, but there are new safety rules in place. What you need to know, that's next. The bank forced to repay $60 million in bungled monthly fees. Diamonds are forever, so why did this rare pair fail to shine at auction? Soon in sport, the Swans land in Melbourne ahead of their huge clash with the Premiers, but where is Buddy Franklin? And we might see a few showers across the long weekend. I'll tell you exactly when they'll arrive with the full forecast soon. It's news happening now. The trusted news feed you need. Every story, every day. Connect direct to 7news.com.au. Welcome back. Time now for a check on the markets with Gemma Acton. Thanks, Mark. The ASX 200 won't reopen until Tuesday, so Aussie shares used their last session until then to race to a six-week high. The index closing at 6,828 points. AMP shareholders reacted positively to news that Chief Executive Francesco Di Ferrari will be leaving the beleaguered wealth manager. He'll be replaced by ANZ Deputy CEO Alexis George. The Aussie dollar has taken a sudden leg lower, as has the struggling gold price. And during the pandemic, pandemic, fund managers put more of our super money into Australian shares. But looking longer term, our super portfolios have become increasingly international. Mark. Gemma, thank you. 
The Commonwealth Bank is in trouble for charging a monthly fee to customers who should have been exempt. In the federal court, corporate regulator ASIC is suing the bank for misleading conduct. $66.5 million was charged between 2010 and 2019. The bank has refunded nearly all of that money to almost a million customers, but could still face a hefty penalty. Despite their beauty, two rare pink argyle diamonds failed to sparkle during an online auction last night. Bidding for each reached around $400,000, but they had been expected to go for a combined $1 million. Lloyd's Auction says negotiations with potential buyers are continuing. After being postponed by the pandemic, the crowds were back today as the Sydney Royal Easter Show threw open its gates. But there are differences this year, with COVID-conscious organisers saying the world is watching. After a year of more downs than ups, some of us need a release. Crowds keen to be crowds, queuing from early morning. COVID safe, of course. We all need to stay safe. We've been waiting two years for this. Cancelled last year, but the big show is back, along with its sights and sounds. Ah. Do you think this is what Sydney needs? Oh, absolutely, I think it's what Sydney needs. Behind the scenes, this is the team keeping everyone safe and healthy. St John's, yes. I've got someone with a wound. Hundreds of cameras monitored by police, marshals on patrol. Tommy and Andy's going to go. Luckily, the very best crowd wranglers come from the bush. I'm at 350, I'm at 60 now. This is the auctioneer state of origin. Morning, morning, done. No hard borders here, but there are high-priced stakes. Ah. After so much time spent apart for so many, this is a chance to reunite. The Easter show on track to be the biggest ticketed event since the pandemic began, leading the way for the world. I think a lot of eyes are on us in regards to the events industry. Serena Andaloro, 7 News. The home loan holiday is over and credit penalties are back. And now missing a repayment could cost you. The major changes that could affect your financial future, how to protect your record and name. Don't miss that story soon on 7 News. But first, Mel is back with sport. And Mel, a night of the boxing has caused problems for two NRL stars. Yeah, it looks that way, Fergo. It seems two players didn't get the memo or defy the directive to not attend the big fight in Newcastle last night. Details up next. Plus, the South's youngster with aspirations of becoming a barber set for a close shave with the master coach who's put mullets on notice. And FIFA announces the locations for the 2023 Women's World Cup. And the big winner is in our own backyard. Welcome back. James Roberts and Will Smith are free to play this weekend despite breaching the NRL's biosecurity protocols by attending last night's Tim Zhu-Dennis Hogan fight. Players were warned not to attend the event late yesterday afternoon. Latrell Mitchell shadow boxing alongside Cody Walker inspired by Tim Zhu's big win. The pair was given special clearance to be ringside but had to wear a mask. All other players were ordered to stay away, but that advice came too late for West Tigers James Roberts and Parramatta's Will Smith, who were already on their way to Newcastle. Roberts didn't wear a mask, as is now required for players in public venues. The NRL is investigating. The pair could face a fine. Apollo has cleared them to play this weekend, the last round before the new 18th man rule kicks in. I don't think it's properly addressed yet, but there's more, more things I think we have to do. I'm pleased what the game did the other day in terms of... Um recognising it. Tomorrow's clash with the dogs has extra significance for Keon Kalal Matangi who grew up in dogs territory. I think he's blown people away at how far he's actually come. The talented forward is focused on a career after footy. I'm actually trying to become a barber to be honest. Well he wants to work on his own haircut for a start. <laughs> what do you call this style? I was called a mullet but uh, <laughs> yeah when's gonna when's probably gonna tell me to cut it soon. Are you gonna let him touch your hair? My hair? Yeah. Yeah I'll give him a crack. I'm very vain when it comes to getting my hair cuts, <laughs> clearly, but uh, we'll see what happens. Well, they might get to play first grade that week if, they, if that's the case, so they better run it through me first. Michelle Bishop, 7 News. As for the big fight itself, as expected, Tim Zhu was far too strong for Dennis Hogan in that fight. Zhu was cut above the eye from a headbutt, but it was only a minor setback for the rising star. Hogan's team threw in the towel late in round five. I was in uh, killer mode. A bit excited and I wanted to knock him out too early and um, I guess I needed to take my time a bit more. 
Unbeaten in 18 fights now, Zoo says he's ready to head overseas but won't rush. The AFL showdown between Lance Franklin and Dustin Martin is off. The Swans flew into Melbourne this afternoon without Buddy, who's been rested from Saturday's clash with two-time defending Premier's Richmond at the MCG. Having played in Brisbane in round one, the Swans are isolating at the team hotel while waiting for COVID test results. Things have changed, but it hasn't thrown us out too much. We've got a young group, so we're, pretty, we're able to adapt pretty quick to, to whatever happens. The Swans-Tigers game is live on 7 Mate on Saturday. The Australian women's cricket team's record of not losing a T20 series since 2017 remains intact, but not in a way they would have liked. The deciding third game against New Zealand at Eden Park was washed out this afternoon with just 17 balls bowled. A three-match one-day series begins in Mount Monganui on Sunday. New South Wales secured hosting rights for next month's one-day cup final with an eight-wicket victory over Queensland last night. A Daniel Hughes century and Steve Smith's 86 not out got the Blues home with ease. It's high, it's long and it's six. Onto the roof, I reckon. With Smith, David Warner and Pat Cummins off to the IPL, the Blues will look very different in the final. The Australian Olympic team has two new members, the first athlete selected in 2021. Sailors Nia Jerwood and Monique de Vries will compete together in Tokyo in the 470 class. 80 athletes have been officially selected, with an expected 480 to travel to Japan. Qualified 18 months ago, so um, yeah, super excited and proud to be able to put on the green and gold. You will, of course, hear the Tokyo Games right here on 7 from July 23. Surfing's World Tour resumed in Newcastle this morning, but it was a tough start for Aussie Olympians in waiting Owen Wright and Julian Wilson. Both finished last in their seeding heats and will face sudden death in round two. Tyler Wright, Steph Gilmore and Sally Fitzgibbons easily won their opening heats in the women's event. And Stadium Australia has won the right to host the final of the Women's Football World Cup in 2023. It's just a huge coup and I couldn't be more pleased as the Premier of New South Wales, especially at this time. Matches will be played in Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane, Adelaide and Perth, along with a host of New Zealand cities. Virgo, this is such exciting news. We're lucky to have such a massive event in our own backyard. It's going to be, imagine Sam Kerr doing backflips and whatever she does in the final. I'm hoping a certain workmate will get me a ticket to that one. Well, well I'll, I'll ask the powers that be. I'm Fingers sure we've crossed. got some connections. And your thoughts on mullets? I like them. Mm. Thanks, Mel. Definitely. The home loan holiday is officially over with banks reintroducing credit penalties on loans deferred during the height of the pandemic. The timing is a double blow to many still reeling from the end of JobKeeper last Sunday with further credit crunches on the horizon. Before the pandemic, corporate masseuse Alex Carpenter provided relaxation for office workers. With JobKeeper over and business slow to return, now she's the one feeling the squeeze. I'm very anxious all the time, you know, like I'm always thinking, have I got enough work? How can I get some more work? And the financial hits keep coming with home loan deferrals now drying up. From today, the credit amnesty is over. If you miss a repayment from this point on and you're not on a hardship agreement with your bank, you could see your credit score negatively impacted. At the program's peak in May last year, one tenth of loans had been temporarily deferred. By the end of February this year, less than 1% were still on ice. For the remaining few... Banks can still help you if you call and ask for help. But make sure you call before you miss a payment. From July this year, banks will shift focus to comprehensive credit reporting, which was delayed during the pandemic. That means all of your borrowing and payments behaviour, both good and bad, will be considered by credit reporting agencies. If you miss a repayment, it could end up on your credit file, but the more that you meet your repayments, it will help improve your credit file. Gemma Acton, 7 News. Now here's a quick look at what's on Sunrise tomorrow. Thanks, Virgo. When you wake up, the Easter extravaganza begins. Where to find the tastiest treats and the freshest seafood, plus the hottest movies to catch these holidays. We'll see you in the morning, Sydney. Sally's back now, Sal. We're heading for a sunny and warm Easter break. Yes, that's right, Mark. It will be superb. A warm 27 today. Right now, it's still a very pleasant 21 in the city. I'll have the full forecast for the long weekend next. Tonight on the latest from 7 News, the world's largest ticketed event since the pandemic began. We're live as day one of a COVID-safe Sydney Easter show wraps up. 
Fair game controversy over COVID safe two up rules announced ahead of Anzac Day. Live to London for full reaction to new royal racism claims. Join me for the latest from 7 News tonight at 11.15. 1.3 million pet population boom. Now, the massive sign-ups for pet insurance. But is it worth it? 7 News, 6 o'clock. Tonight, 7 News headlines relief for tens of thousands of Easter holiday makers with the Brisbane COVID lockdown lifting and no new cases here in New South Wales. There's a race to snap up 800,000 half-price airfares on offer as part of a federal government bid to boost tourism. Notorious Sydney gang leader Bassam Hamzi has been charged in a major breakthrough into the murder of teenager Braden Dillon. And a UK socialite is claiming Princess Anne is the royal, being accused of racism by Harry and Meghan. Now here's Sally with Sydney's weather. Thank you, Mark. Well, it's shaping up to be a warm and sunny Easter long weekend, although there are some signs that we have another significant rain event on the way next week. The city today was one of the warmest spots thanks to those direct easterly winds coming off the land, a top of 27 degrees. We did see a few showers just cruise along the coast around 9 o'clock last night. They cleared before dawn, 13 millimetres at the airport, 4 millimetres at Terry Hills, with tops of 25 degrees for most centres across Sydney today. Across New South Wales today, that highest rainfall once again just around that Northern Rivers area. Ballina picked up around 20 millimetres in the gauges, Lismore about 15, and that's because we've just got those onshore winds from the high pressure system stronger across these parts, and that's just feeding some moisture onto the coast there. We are also keeping our eye on a low that might form off the Queensland coast into tomorrow and Saturday. That has the potential to trigger another significant rain event on the east coast. Unlike the last rain event at this stage, models have the system are moving fairly quickly down the coast so we won't see day after day of relentless rain but the areas that will be hit are of course those areas that are still feeling the effects of the last major rain event. Around the capital cities for tomorrow a shower too in Brisbane 26 degrees there, clear skies in Adelaide and also in Canberra mostly fine into Melbourne and Hobart while Perth might just see a bit of cloud at times with a warm top of 32 degrees. A closer look across New South Wales tomorrow, once again we've got those showers for the northern rivers and maybe just starting to creep into the mid-north coast as well. Port Macquarie might see around four millimetres in the gauges. Early fog is also forecast through the central tablelands tomorrow. It will clear fairly quickly though with a sunny day on the way. The rest of the southern areas should be mostly fine. A closer look for Sydney tomorrow. Early fog is expected in Penrith, Campbelltown and Richmond. A touch of cloud for the rest of Sydney. 27 degrees in the western suburbs and a cooler 20... Oh, there goes my earring. 24 degrees on the coast. Now, on the water tomorrow, east southeasterly winds are with a swell just sitting around the one metre mark. You never know what's going to happen in live TV, do you? Dropping down to 15 degrees tonight, it'll be a foggy start in the west, otherwise warm and sunny for Good Friday, 26 degrees. Staying warm across the weekend, 27 degrees on Saturday and Sunday, even warmer, 29 degrees in our west. Then we've got those showers starting up on Easter Monday, and it looks like that significant rain into Wednesday. We're keeping a close eye on that. I'm off now to go find a new pair of earrings, Mark. We know what to get you for your birthday, <laughs> Sal. All good. That is 7 News for this Thursday. We'll have updates for you throughout the evening. I'm Mark Ferguson from all the team. I hope you have a very happy and very safe Easter.